Hey everyone, welcome to the finals of the third standard tournament, Monster Sanctuary Tournament Circuit. I'm Heron Crane. And I'm Conan the Librarian. And this match is Flowing Jeffo Up versus Roland Gizmo. So we'll see how this set goes. Yeah, we've seen we've seen these players before and we know what teams they're running. It's a, a similar uh, matchup to the third place match where we've got a charge based team versus an occult bleed setup. Mm -hmm. Yeah, both players definitely know what they're doing. It's the reason they made it to the finals. Yeah, and, and I think that there's a, definitely a difference in pace between these two teams. Um, Flung Jeffo up, starting off with the um, classic age setup, and uh, Roland Gizmo is getting a getting a bleed bleed start going. And usually, I think Roland Gizmo's team is a bit more late game oriented, but. The set start here with Mimic is, um, is quite aggressive. Yeah, totally. And Spinner is also pretty aggressive, so yeah, he's going that way. I wonder if he if he doesn't run fiery shots on Mimic, because um, that would be a good move to use on Mega Rock. But I guess Mimic, you have a lot of choices on which uh, which moves you want to prioritize. Very difficult to build indeed. But seems the first turn for Gizmo wasn't as uh, as effective as he may have hoped, and uh, we'll see how he turns out. Yeah, the thing about this this age setup on Jeffo upside is that um, Vertrag has Purify, which allows him to remove a lot of the bleed stacks, and the team just keeps getting tankier over time. Yeah. And there goes uh, Sutsune, that, that Mega Rock with Leaf Slash really does some work. Yeah, Sutsune is such a such a, a integral component of a bleed team. Has so many good auras, has revive. Um, and he's kind of limited in these supports that he runs. It looks like a, um, he's running a Rackledge as a DPS rather than a support. Gizmo seems like he's not quite breaking through the wall for Jeffo up. There are some debuffs starting to gather, but I'm not sure it's going to be enough to slow him down. I guess the by having blind and bleed sacks, it, it kind of inhibits um, from Jeffo up's ability to remove the sacks with Purify, because so you're always going to have some to hang around. Yeah, and that, def that definitely is an advantage for Gizmo. Like you said, just putting on lots of different stacks makes it much more difficult to deal with. Gizmo also has that lovely bleed out, dark shift passive on Spinner, mm -hmm. putting on the pressure a little further. Definitely with this team, you have to ensure that you always have at least one bleed out user on the field, and man has Toad taunted every single turn. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think every turn, but it's indeed come in clutch a couple times there. You can tell that the bleed stacks are starting to build up though by the amount of damage that Flo Jeff Up's taking at the end of each turn. And it also looks like Toad and Vertrag are his only pure healers as well. In his back row, he's got more of uh, more monsters that support by attacking. Yeah, but thankfully, things like Ornithopter can really bring their value in that way anyway. Oh, look at these blind stacks. <laughs> really coming into play there. Yeah, so for, for those who don't know, the... Um, a, a, a move that can't be dodged, like Leaf Slash, can miss um, by a blind sack, still. Let's see if Mimic's able to take something down this turn. Oh, he decides to focus for a track this time. He's a bit worried about the gravity. Yeah, it hit pretty hard, but definitely not hard enough. That might be enough to take Toad out. Yep, Toad down, and that's definitely a blow to Jeffo up there, but the game is far from over. 
Yeah, the unfortunate thing for Roland Gizmo um, is that he doesn't currently have a monster on the field that has Splatter, so all the bleed stacks that were on Toad don't get spread to the other monsters. Yeah, which definitely is a downside, but given how generally fragile Sitsune is, I don't think he was necessarily counting on having Splatter. It's a big damage previews here on Jeffo upside. Oh yes. Contemplating when to drop that gravity, and the answer could be pretty soon. I'm actually amazed at how much damage Salahammer can do just coming in with no buffs and just purely just coming in and knocking out a monster. Yeah, in recent times, players have seen a little more value in actually running an offensive Dark Salahammer. In the past, Light had been far more popular and a more supportive role, but, you know, people are seeing what he has to offer. Yeah, I mean, I think the, the changes to charge synergies have really brought him to the forefront, and I think for Jeffo up, that was the right target to take out, because now Nolan Gizmo doesn't have any more bleed out passives. Yeah, definitely lacking that, but also this means that Gizmo's down to his last DPS, in this case Manticorb. So, you know, if uh, Jeff Wop can take out Manticorb, then Gizmo's probably pretty sunk at that point. I guess Mimic is still a, still a DPS, but yeah, I see what you mean. It's and yeah, and they... exactly in terms of backup, but I don't see just his Mimic being able to break through at this point if it's not been able to break through so far. I think Mega Rock is a huge threat to Manticorb. I was able to take out Salahammer. Which is a bonus in itself, but the fact that Jeffowup still has a lot of age on his side is just an encroaching doom. Mm. You look at that, Mega Rock doesn't even need the combo from Ornithopter to do big damage. Oh yeah. We're gonna see a thousand leaves. Opting not to go for the tornado. It's gonna need to hit though. We got rid of the blind stacks. Alright, Gizmo up against the wall here. Yeah, unfortunately the that Mega Rock is just such a huge threat at the moment. If he can't take it out this turn, I feel like it might be the end. Yeah, even even if he's able to get rid of the Mega Rock, uh, Veritrag is still a pretty big threat, I would say. Not to mention that Elder Gel and Reserve, which, especially with Phoenix Affinity being able to self-res, yeah, I don't think it's going to happen for Gizmo this time. It looks oh. like he's holding Ereklich to do the final hit. The yeah, <laughs> looks like he's doing a bit of damage control there. Even though he might have been able to take out Veritrag, he needed yeah, to how, how do you attack with Ereklich first? Yeah, it needed to make sure to get some blind onto Mega Rock. Yeah, Ornithopter is looking like it could do some damage as well. That charge amplifier really does make a difference. Alright, and there goes the Manticorb. He could still revive with the Racklich, but if he's able to take out Mimic as well. Bird drag might go down this turn. I bet he's wishing he had fiery shots right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's always a hard choice on how to build Mimic, though, so 
I can totally understand why tackle has been his main move. And we'll see if he decides to make any uh, tech changes in the subsequent games to deal with yeah. this specific team. You know, I'll be curious of that myself. Yeah, so rolling gizmo is somewhat able to keep pace when he takes that one monster per turn, but yeah, as soon as he starts taking out two, it becomes a big disadvantage. Yeah, unfortunately, even with Revive, not really seeing any sort of win condition here for Gizmo. Yeah, there's the forfeit. So game one going to Fun Jaffa, and now we're on to game two. Looks like players are running the same teams. They don't need changes to the monsters. Yeah, just just like, uh, yeah. I wouldn't see why Jaffalup would choose to specifically change it up when his front line was so strong to begin with. Yeah, same for Gizmo here. So now, Gizmo's... Oh, he, he decided to tech in fiery shots. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> still not doing a bunch of damage, though. Yeah, but it still really helps a lot with taking out Toad as well. Yeah, in this case, if, if Toad taunts, then have a um, still be able to do a lot of damage to him. Since you might survive in one more turn. So yeah, so this this Sitsune, I noticed that in previous games it, it runs Cleansing Flame, which is an unusual choice, I think, because usually she's healing. Yeah, people people tend to run her, as you said, more in a healer supportive fashion instead of an offensive supportive fashion but i suppose that gizmo's seen more value in trying to counter Jeffalup's buffing which in this case yeah it is it is doing quite well at that preview's not quite looking like it will kill lots of misses there getting rid of those buffs with cleansing flame Toad coming in. It's a pretty clutch taunt. Yeah, but as you see, Bleed Out is starting to do its work in a significant fashion. Hmm. Yeah, he's gonna need to be able to take out Sasune soon, I think. Or it's going to get out of hand. Yeah, having a Mega Rock really helps with that, though, so it's all a question of when. It's interesting that Mega Rock is, is only... Or actually, um, I guess Salahammer has Cold Toss. It's an Earth-type move. <laughs> oh, look. Put in um, Mimic. <laughs> yep. That's something you don't see run very often on Mimic. But it, it really <laughs> did... It really was really good. This, uh, this exactly. I'm pretty sure that Gizmo noticed how quickly and easily his Tsutsune was defeated. So he wanted to put, you know, another factor to help it. That was a big kill, the fact that the, spl the um, bleed stack splattered onto Toad and Vertrag. Oh yes, totally. So that's definitely a, a big step for Gizmo. Though, the pressure is so long with Elder Joe, another big hitter. It does somewhat shift the pressure away from Tsutsune though, um, which is interesting. So. Yeah, yeah, in terms of elemental weaknesses. And now Tackle would be preferable over Fiery Shots. <laughs> yes, Veritrag is definitely the threat, as you said, being weak to neutral. If only you could run every max level attack on Mimic. <laughs> <laughs> Good damage preview on Mimic oh. there. Oh, the 26%. That was pretty huge. Yeah, fire, Fireball is a powerful move, but quite vulnerable to dodging. It only takes one. So we'll see if he decides to... Looks like he's cleansing the buffs off Elder Gel. I wonder if he'll 
decide to attack Elder Gel or if he'll choose to take out Toad or try. Wait, he is running max level tackle. That should be enough to take Toad out with the bleed. Oh, not quite. Oh, hmm. so close, but not quite. Yeah, well, Jeff is fighting this time. Yeah, Jeff will up as you saw there using the AOE heal. Definitely knows that Toad's days are numbered, so just wanted to make sure to get those heal charges spread around. Let go for the fireball again. All those dice. Oh, yeah. A bit higher miss chance that time, but still to miss. A 25% and then a 50%. It's quite unlucky. Yeah, to, to, to a point, but yeah, blind is uh, pretty devastating for Elder Gel. Oh, ta Toad really taunting, preventing more blind stacks from being applied. Yeah, definitely in favor for Jeffo up there. That's a pretty big tackle, though. <laughs> wow, <laughs> that was a bit of damage. Toad finished off by that bleed, though. This time he might actually be able to take out Mimic if the... Now that he's removed the spline stack. Yeah, so even though Gizmo's doing a lot better this match, that Fairtrag is still an ever-present and ever-growing threat. A lot of age stacks. Yeah, perhaps the, the move would be to sh shift targets from Elder Gel to Vertrag. To a point, uh, even though Vertrag is a big threat, it tends to be a big threat only every few turns. So if Gizmo can actually get rid of Elder Gel, that's going to be a lot of his main issues handled. That's true. Elder Gel is the only remaining uh, pure DPS. Mm -hmm. But Vertrag is, is going to do a gravity soon, which we're not sure how, how many members of Gizmo's team that would wipe out. Even if it goes with a three monster wipe, the fact that Gizmo has three in reserve, you know, that gives him a pretty big advantage. Mm -hmm. Especially since Mimic continues to hold on. Surprisingly so. I would be surprised if Mimic wasn't able to get a kill this turn in some shape or form. Going for Elder Gel. Looks like it's going to break through the Phoenix Affinity. Yep, and bleed finishes off. Also All those notice... passive heals on Azurak. <laughs> yep. Also notice how Gizmo had the foresight to go and put some blind onto Vertrag. Good news. That's very, very well played. I mean, even though those damage previews look really good, he's going to need to get lucky on the, on the hits. That will be the challenge. Let's see. Survey oh, wait, we'll says... Take out the oh wow, that, uh... <laughs> that Azurak was really slippery there. <laughs> Yeah, definitely uh, a bit of a disappointment for Jaffa up there. Especially since Gizmo has two bleed out monsters, I'd say the chances of Jaffa up coming back from this are probably not that good. Because even if he can finish off the Tsutsune, yeah. yeah the spinner's I mean... pressure is pretty, pretty intense there. Yeah, and with no revive as well, he if he loses this monster, it won't be coming back. I wonder um, what ultimate Gizmo runs on his Sitsune, because that would have been a pretty opportune time to use full heal. Hmm, yeah, it does make you wonder. Oh, opting to target Sally Hammer. Good to take that out, I guess. It's his main damage dealer. And Big bleed on for a track. 
Yep, like you mentioned from last game, Splatter from Tsutsune making a very big difference in the fact that Tsutsune was able to survive. Yeah, Tsutsune is just such a, a core monster in a, in a cult lead team. It really brings a lot to the table and, and yeah, it's one of the best supports in the game. Okay, and there's this game the finish. Going to Roland Gizmo, going into game three. So at the moment we have a, a one win for each player, and Flowing Jothwap's changing up his opener to the uh, classic Goat Hammerfish. Yeah, and, and I can see the wisdom in having a more offensively minded team to try to get a couple of those uh, core kills early on such as Tsutsune. Hmm. That being said, he still, of course, has that very strong age core of Megarok and Veritrug in the reserve in case the battle goes a bit long. Come on. So close, but not quite there. Mimic hanging on. I always wonder against the this opener with target Salahammer and Koi. I wonder if it's just best to target the target first and and just take it out because it's such a such an important monster. But I, yeah. I wonder. Yeah, see what he decides to do. Yeah, I mean, when it comes to that core of three, any one that you can take out will be a victory in itself. So I think it mainly has to do with what team you're running when facing them. Hmm. The one main concern, I guess, if he does decide to take down Salahammer is that Vertrag comes in and then you have triple charge amplifier. Just, uh, oh, he didn't quite get there. Not this time, but again, as long as he has bleed out going on. Hmm. Yeah, there's no, pur no purify currently on the... Um, on the Jeffo upside. Not that uh, Purify would really be able to keep up with the uh, number of bleed stacks that Gizmo is applying. Yeah, yeah, true. Let's we'll take out Mimic, though. It's going to be a pretty big Aqua Blast. Oh, good hits. It's a pretty devastating blow to Gizmo. Oh, he decides to not bring in Spinner, so now he doesn't have a, a bleed-out monster. I'll admit that was a surprise for me as well, but something makes me guess that he's keeping Spinner in reserve for fear that it would be destroyed too quickly. Mm. He's gonna, looks like he's gonna try to target Koi with Racklich. Maybe not. All right. Getting that tri triple charge amplifier. Yep. But as you saw, Gizmo was getting some work done with a combination of debuffs and bleed. Racklich's bleed out really making the difference there. Tsunami. Okay, only two left for Gizmo. Probably not gonna happen this match. Jeffelup has a good combo of offensive and defensive presence going on, so I don't feel confident that Gizmo is gonna be able to make it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Koi, Koi is a, such a huge threat at the moment. Yeah, the, the silver lining is having bleed out. But not sure if it's going to be enough, especially looking at how much damage that Koi can do right now. 
Oh, didn't quite take out a monster that time, but gravity's gonna do it. Oh, that's your axe hanging on. <laughs> Alright, well, this does give Gizmo another shot. Yeah, I mean, he's got bleed out, but there aren't that many bleed stacks. Yeah, but when it comes to reviving, as long as there's still a reviver, there's still hope. Gizmo probably contemplating hard how to play around those protect status on both Koi and Veritrag. Yep, using the single target to take away the protect status off Koi. Not even close to enough damage. Yep. Targo almost gone from the bleed, but still hanging on. There we go, a smart move, getting rid of some of those debuffs, probably in the hopes of removing some of that weakness so the Koi can do more damage. And Vertrag as well is, is previewed to do quite a bit of damage, despite using Gravity last turn. Yep, Goes looks like... Safe option. Yeah, trying to set up for a triple kill here. That's it. Okay. Shuffle up was successful on that triple kill. Right, game it four, so if, if Flum Shuffle Up's able to win this one, then we'll win the finals. We'll see if we can see a comeback from, from Gizmo here. Oh, and he's, he's deciding not to loot with Targo this time. Yeah, yeah, and a little little one monster change from last time to still have the Toad. If I had to make a guess here, probably doing a little bit of mind games against Gizmo. Try to make sure he can't just change his setup to directly counter Jeffo Ups. We haven't seen Gizmo change any monsters um, yet in this, in this match. Yeah, I, I mean, he's, he's felt pretty confident about his lineup, and given some of the action we've seen, I can understand why. interesting move, aiming for the Azerac this time. Azerac is, of course, always a really strong presence on the team. All the same, I would still lean more towards Tsutsune. I mean, I guess, I guess Jaffa Up knows that Roland Gizmo doesn't run full heal on his Tsutsune, which would have been an ideal time to use it on Azerac to spread all the buffs around and heal to full. Megarot going down from fiery shots. Yep, able to uh, hit its weakness quick and early before Megarot could get a lot of buffs and age. So it's a good move there. Notice how Jeffo goes and puts in the Salahammer, given Mimic's weakness to magic. I suppose he's feeling pretty good about its damage capabilities, even though it's not necessarily a pure DPS, more of an offensive support. But hey, if it works. I guess he also knows that that Koi would be a good one to bring in later once Furtrack gets a few more charge stacks and can enhance the gravity a bit. Will this be enough? Let's see. Okay, not, not this time, but given the uh, buffing potential that Jeffowup has, he's hoping maybe next turn. I see what you mean. At times like these, you probably would want Tsutsune to heal, but that's not the loadout that Gizmo's chosen. Yeah, I mean, you could still run an attacker Setsune, but with with full heal as an ultimate. And I feel like it would be a, a very good 
balance. Yeah, that, that is one way of getting the best of both worlds in a certain sense. Oh, that mimic hitting like a truck. <laughs> there, there is a lot of passive healing going on on, on Gizmo's side as well. Probably Between Azurak's auto heal and, and yeah. Yeah, Feast. probably. Yeah. Probably what he's counting on there, indeed. Always previews not looking quite as devastating as the previous game. <laughs> yeah, not having the second charge amplifier out there does make a difference since Toad, since Toad does not have that anymore. It's been a long time since Toad had that ability. <laughs> <laughs> that was before my time. <laughs> Oh, yes. Jeff, what making careful consideration, though, drawing down that clock probably just doesn't see an ideal move this turn. Definitely gives Gizmo further chance to take the lead here. Even though those age sacks are building up on both Toad and Vertrag, the fact that Gizmos lost no one is a pretty big advantage. So Koi is the last monster on Jeff's upside that somewhat resembles a damage dealer at this stage of the game. Let's see if Mimic decides to and goes for the elemental strikes. Which is uh, getting close to taking some things out. But yeah, part of able to do it. Part of the goal there is just to build up even more bleed stacks, since at this time, Dark Sitsune being on the field, having access to both splatter and bleed out. So, I think Gizmo's feeling pretty good that he's made forward progress that turn, even though the kills didn't happen immediately. So Sune really does get quite tanky just from having heroic defense um, and all the buffs that she accumulates. Yeah, and since Jeffawup is not running Ornithopter this time, that means the amount of buff control severely diminished. You know, like you said, with all that passive healing, though, I uh, definitely underestimated that on Gizmo's side. Yeah, I think there is there is quite a bit to have a cleansing flame now that I think about it, because of all the sidekick stacks, you really do build up a lot of combo. Okay, Jeff, what, feeling the pressure at this point? I think he has no choice but to use gravity now, or else Vertrag will be dead next turn. Yeah, all the same. All the same, I think I think that Jeff Wup isn't really feeling that content with the previews for gravity, so therefore not going for it. Putting <laughs> his money on Koi. between three blind stacks and two tether stacks, it's not a good spot. Decides to remove debuffs instead. Yeah, better to, to not take a hit if it's not going to do you any good. Ooh, that is a lot of stacks on Koi. Yep, and I think it's going to be enough to take down all three. Oh, maybe not quite but still took out all his DPS monsters. Yeah, effectively this this game is done. Yeah, so this time, without rolling Gizmo, losing a single monster, and I think we, we might see a, a, a finals game go down to game five, which is pretty suspenseful. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> even though Gizmo hadn't made any changes in his monsters for his lineup, we had seen a couple of skill changes. So I think a lot of it just had to do with Gizmo figuring out how to deal with Jeffalup's team. How many heals do you think Azurak gets each turn? I just noticed like <laughs> it's like a continuous stream of tens. A lot. <laughs> Yeah, it definitely shows you that even though team building strategy is super important, execution during the game is huge. So here we go into game five, and we see the same two teams we've seen, or except for actually now we see Ornithopter coming in. On, yes, um, it, just for upside. Exactly. Benched the Toad once again, put in Ornithopter. <clears throat> Jeffalup was probably looking at all those sidekicks on Gizmo's team and not liking what he saw. Wants a, another way to try to control that a little bit. Will he go for Satsune or Mimic? Yeah, that's a good question, especially when, only, when you only have two actions on turn one. Two percent dodge chance. I guess that's only for the first hit, though. So that's that's pretty huge. All right, that's definitely a game changer. There, we've noticed the times that Gizmo's been successful, and times that he's been able to keep his Tsune on the field. Yeah, going first is certainly huge for Von Jeff up in this matchup. Gizmo deciding to try to keep the pressure on with bleed by putting out another bleed out monster. Though I do wonder if Gizmo is going to feel a lack of support in terms of his monster's effectiveness. He's looking at targeting Koi this time. Dark Shroud. Mm -hmm. And it's seen before since. Oh! There goes the Koi. Yeah, see, Jeffawup is having to think a little hard about which monster to put out. Spark Shower looking really strong here. Oh yes. I can understand why he decided on Mega Rock. Want to get that age building up as soon as possible. Yeah, that fire weakness. Uh, ooh. <laughs> Hit hard. Yeah, not good for Spinner either. But the move can't be dodged. Kind of breaks right through the concealed. I had to guess Gizmo's probably going to put out Manticorb. Yeah, it seems like he has always been saving Raklich for last, given that it has Revive. Exactly, and given how this match is going, he's going to rely on that. The Salahammer is such a big threat at the moment, but he's deciding to target. Um, Rock. Yep, needs to get those blinds on there. And losing a bleed out and a I believe spinner has deep wounds, doesn't he? That's oh, not Admit I forget specifically. I wanna say I wanna say Spinner does have deep wounds, in which case he also did lose a pretty big passive by not having Spinner on the field. Yeah, yeah, it does it does have deep wounds, yes. So yeah, I mean at this point the bleed aspect is pretty much gone. I mean granted that Manticorp does have bleed passives, but 
I don't think he's going to get enough pressure. Though, you know, Rakulich coming in with with Blood Drive can definitely help since uh, Manticorb is a pretty big debuff monster. I wonder if the, if the play here would be to just try, try to target down Salahammer. So he's going to go for Mega Rock, which I understand as well. I mean, with, with Mega Rock being Jeffo Up's last pure DPS monster, I can understand the appeal in trying to take it down. That said, though, um, Arachlich resists most of Mega Rock's attacks. So running low on mana. Takes out the Manticorp. Ooh. Manticorp was pretty lucky in the previous round by dodging a couple of those hits, but not this time. We'll see if revive will be enough. I think the move here would be to pivot to Salhammer. See if he does. Nope, still trying to take out that Mega Rock. I suppose if, if Mega Rock uh, gets too many age stacks, it will become impossible to take down, so I, I well, can see why he would do that. Uh, that is before Infinity Stacks start. Hmm. But I'm not sure it's going to get to that point. Though the real question is, will Jeff Watt be able to break through enough to be able to counter a single revive each round? And looking at those damage previews, probably. At, at some stage, those blinds are not going to be enough. But I wonder if I wonder if he targeted. Arachlich first with Salahammer and then Manticorp with Mega Rock if he could take them both out. And I had the feeling that if that was possible, Jeffo Up would have done so already. Yeah. But, you know, wait for the age sex to build up, wait for Infinity to come into play. If anything, you do have to admire Gizmo's tenacity in this match, even though it's been tough and mounting odds against him, he's still going for it as long as the dice roll in his favor. They almost did in a big way on that on that turn if Manticore would dodge one more hit. Looks like he, this time he was able to take out two monsters, which is going to be quite hard for Roland Gizmo to recover. Yeah, this is probably the end. Truffle Up has shown that he can take out two, and that's pretty much all he needs. Let's be the turret, let's see. Uh huh, I see that mana issue definitely coming into play for Mega Rock. Alright, Phoenix Affinity down on Arachlich. Oh, there he goes. Yep. Mm -hmm. Alright, that's pretty much game. Yeah, I think <laughs> one of the main reasons people run per track alongside Mega Rock is to to get those channel stacks and counteract the big rock's lack of mana. Yeah, that H does make a big difference. 
for the win. So yeah, so um, tournament going to flow in Jaffa Joho. Congratulations. And congratulations to all the other players who made it in the top eight. We've got Rolling Gizmo in second place, Red in third, Death in fourth, and fifth through eighth, Belter, Sphinx, Search, and Barrel. Lots of good, good players in this top eight, and a lot of really entertaining and close matches. Oh, totally. Like, I, I thought that this set of matches was particularly compelling, not only in the way that uh, the, both players were willing to switch up their strategies, but also the fact that it went to a game five. Yeah, so um, thank you to everyone who came out and watched the tournament, and um, we'll hope to see you next time. Should be hosting another tournament within a, a couple months. So um, yeah, thanks again, and see you all next time.